Coming up on Hawk TV, we take a look at a junior artist, student and staff's opinions on gun control, and wrestling's performance in last week's state tournament. This is Hawk TV for Friday, March 2nd. Good morning, Hebron High School. I'm Hanya Qureshi. And I'm Michelle Fenninger. This year, students competed in Visual Arts Scholastic Event, also known as VASE. Five students advanced to the state rounds, including junior Evelyn Ka. Hannah Mobley got to take a closer look into Ka's artwork. Art teacher Jennifer Russell has been preparing her students since October for the VASE competitions. Our region, 11 North, gets together. We have about 2,000 kids that participate and they have the opportunity to get their artwork juried, which is really important for artists because they get constructive feedback on their piece and at the same time they also get it judged. And so they are able to get between a one and a four, the four being the highest. Junior Evelyn Call prefers to use colored pencil when she is working thanks to Russell's help of finding the media that best fits her. I usually just use color pencil because I'm not good at anything else. Like I can do graphite, but it's really hard for me because I really like the boldness of color. I try to talk to them about doing what is important to them, what they like, finding their own style, um, finding a media that works for them. And hers is color pencil, so she really wanted to hit it hard with color pencil. Ka wanted to reflect her connection with nature through her artwork. She also wanted to show nature's growth with leaves growing through the flu. I'm usually a really passive person, but I also connected to how the environment is really passive and how we always abuse it and neglect it. So I wanted to elaborate on how the stages of being passive can be overcome and how the environment has overcome that as well. She's very quiet, she's very peaceful, it's very zen. And you can see that reflected in her art when you look at it, it's just, you're just in awe of it. And that's kind of how I look at her. She's just, when you just first encounter her, um, she's very quiet and you would never expect her to like bust out this crazy art. Russell has influenced Call by showing her that she can express herself through her artwork. Russell provides a hands-off workspace for her students to create their art. She's also a mentor to me, and I feel really comfortable around her, and I find it really comforting that I can actually express myself and not be afraid of anything. And she's really relentless when it comes to base. She's kind of like me, where it's kind of like, I will ask when I need something, but other than that, it's just kind of hands-off. Um, and so, you know, I just kind of provide that for her. So if she needs something, I will let her know or I will help her. But if she doesn't, then she's kind of um, a rock star and she just kind of goes for it. Um, and she has the freedom to do so in class. And I just walk around and check in on her every now and then uh, when, you know, I just know that she's made progress and then we, we go from there. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Hannah Mobley. Now back to the studio. Ka Shadeoye Dipe. Brittany Fang, Grace Kang, and Ellie Champion will go to state competitions April 27th to 28th. We'll be right back. Hey, don't forget, AT exams are coming up. When do we have to sign up by? The deadline is March 9th, the Friday before spring break. How much the AP test cost? The cost is $94. How do I sign up for the AP exam? Hey, Michael, every AP teacher has a sheet in their classroom with a QR code on it. You can pay online or at Sweet B with cash. Welcome back from spring break. Did you guys sign up for your AP exams? Welcome back. Since the February 14th shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, students across the country have been discussing what can be done to keep the school safe. I got to take a closer look at the school's student and staff's opinions about the issue. 
Both Principal Scott Finch and Junior Savion Newsom said that they believe it is unnecessary for civilians to have easy access to military-grade weapons and think it should be deterred. My opinion is that some of the weapons that we have in our society are not really needed. Some of the military-style rifles, like the AR-15 that was used uh, in Florida, that, that's a military weapon. It's not a, it's not a weapon used to hunt. Some of the guns that are out there are, are just military-style weapons used for war. Somehow we've made those legal and okay to carry in our country. The common man should not have the right to own the, the top gun used by 90% of the military. It's just not logical. It's not logical to give so much firepower and so much really opportunity to someone you just tr you don't know what they're going to do. Newsom said a difference can be made with a strong push from the younger generation in an attempt to limit today's gun violence. But there's still school shootings. There's still children bringing s guns to school. There's it's just all these issues. It's going to stem it's going to stem from the fact that we have guns. That we're able to get a teenager is able to get gun. That's what that's what the issue is going to stem from. And it's our responsibility as teenagers and as students to bring the issue to light because we're the ones dying. We're the 17, 16, 15 year olds that are getting killed. There's children that are about to go to college that can't go to college anymore because their parents had to bury them. Officer Kevin Stiles said it's important to focus on the innocent lives that were lost rather than the people who caused the violence. We need to change our culture is what it comes down to. And in the meantime, it's gonna continue to go, go and happen because people like I said, the media loves to get out there and, and report on it, and they talk about a whole lot of information about the shooter. There are some people out there that are going to say, hey, I want to be in the news too. So like I said, if we start changing the way we report on these things and the way we talk about it, we should um, talk more about the victims and like I said, what great people they were as opposed to the shooter. Finch said adults need to realize change must occur not only from the works of the youth, but that adults must be the ones to make the change. When a young person has to come to an adult saying, hey, I need you to help protect me, well, that's, that's just normal thinking. And so anything somebody else might be thinking about uh, gun control or not gun control, when, it, when a young person comes to an adult and says, can you protect me, well, that's what we're supposed to do. And so there's really not much politicians can reply to that because they know inherently that you should be doing something to protect young people. The young people are just, you know, just, just nailing the adults left and right because the adults know they should be doing something to protect kids. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Hanya Qureshi. Now back to the studio. A march on Washington to call for school safety and gun control will occur on March 24th. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Last weekend, wrestling sent four qualifiers to the state tournament in Houston. Elena Barnes gives us the recap on their performance. Last weekend, four wrestlers qualified to compete in the state tournament. Head coach David Rosansky said his team was more prepared for state this year compared to last. Well, this year we had four entrants to the state tournament, whereas last year we only had one, uh, Joey Galvan. So we had a lot more participation that way, and um, I would say we're just a lot more ready. We, we did a lot as far as training our moves, uh, honing our skills. So I think we're just more ready to wrestle at a high level this year, and uh, it showed off. Returning to state for his second year, junior Joey Galvin said he could have done better, but is still pleased with his performance. I didn't expect myself to go to state, but I ended up making my way there. 
and I didn't, when I showed up to state, should have done a little bit better, but you know, I still said my name up there. Senior Jason Beltran advanced to state for the first time, placing fifth in the 145 pound bracket with a total of 16 qualifiers. I'm actually very proud because uh, um, a lot of people didn't think I, I would even make it to state, you know, uh, and just not uh, let alone even place there. I knew like, I put in the time for it and I put in the work, but you know, I'm glad that there was people doubting me because you know, that motivated me more to you know, wrestle the best I can, like I could, you know. Rosansky said he is proud of Beltran performing at his highest level and meeting all expectations at stake. I couldn't be more proud. Uh, he's as proud as he could be. Uh, he, he wrestled as best as he could as far as, again, he uh, left it all on the mat. He wrestled hard. He attacked his opponents. He did everything that I asked him to do. So, um, you know, it was 100% as hard as you can work, and he had a strong work ethic. and. Um, that's as best that I can put it. Now that Beltran's high school career is over, he said he is thankful for the opportunity and support he had while wrestling for Hebron. You know, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes because, you know, it's always a struggle coming in, sweating in a small room with the same guys every day, but, you know, you just kind of get used to it and they really become a family with you, and I'm glad that I'm part of that family. And I just want to thank everyone that was supporting me. I really want to thank my coach, Coach Rosansky. is the best coach, I believe, here at Hebron High School, and because he's always been um, pushing me and giving me the opportunity to wrestle on varsity as a sophomore, and I just really appreciate him a lot. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Elena Barnes. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Elena. In other sports news, track will be competing in the Coppell Relay at Coppell High School tomorrow. Also tonight, girls soccer is playing at Flower Mound at 7.30 and boys soccer is playing at home against Flower Mound at 7.30. Baseball and softball will be in Houston competing in the Siena tournament today and tomorrow. That's it for today's broadcast. I'm Michelle Finninger. And I'm Hanya Qureshi. Have a great rest of your day. Have any story suggestions? Email us down below. And follow us on Snapchat and Twitter.